there was no place for me to return to. This was the only place I could go. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to what I'm about to describe to you. It's late at night and you're in your bed. And even though you know tomorrow you will have a lot of work to get done, sleep just won't come. So you get out your phone and scroll through social media or hop online to chat with people who, like you, don't want to go to sleep yet. A while ago I was going through my contacts looking for someone who might still be awake. And then out of nowhere, looking at the small icons of the messenger app, an idea hit me. Suddenly I was full of creativity and motivation and I just knew I had something. For a moment I understood this weird emotion of tired wakefulness, this almost zen-like trance that seemed to be only found in the small window between yesterday and tomorrow. I think it says a lot about my creative process. Not so much a methodical approach as opposed to these sonic booms of inspiration out of seemingly nowhere. So I set out to try and explain what this weird solitary feeling is you get at night and why it seems to be so easy to get motivation in these hours. Now, I don't know about all of you, but for me, most of the people I know I don't actually see that often. Looking purely at the time we interact with our friends and acquaintances, most of the time we don't see them in real life, but a digital placeholder. They're icons on a screen, personas. That's how we interact. There's not only a real distance between us, but a metaphorical one as well. Layers upon layers of a carefully crafted online presence. Let's call it the digital self. Don't get me wrong, I'm by no means exempt from that, and I do think these connections can be intimate, sometimes more so than the ones we have in quote unquote real life, though I don't like that term, it implies an inherent inferiority. But it's true that this distance makes us ever so slightly removed. We pour everything into our digital replicas, feeding them with data, to the point where if someone were to ask me about my personality, I think it would be easier to show them my online presence. The songs I listen to the most, the posts I save on Instagram, these things, in a way, show who I am as a person better than if I try to explain it myself. We spend our time in this hyper-reality, thousands of like-minded individuals only a few clicks away. But maybe that's a topic for another day. Distance isn't a bad thing in and of itself. I think it will resonate with a lot of you when I say we sometimes long for a more meaningful connection. Something real, more real even than real life. It's one of the reasons we indulge in escapism, especially with the plethora of new media available to us today. We get caught up in a cycle of being alone and escaping into analog or digital landscapes, going on quests and adventures just to land back on square one. And through all of this, it's dawning on us that it's impossible to surround ourselves with company at all times. That at the end of the day, we're only ever left with ourselves. It's a feeling of being isolated in a connected world. I'd like to show you the works of artist and photographer Aristotle Rufinus, a series he so fittingly called Alone Together. I think in these vast cityscapes he perfectly captures this sense of isolation, a kind of collective solitude. But all of this is by no means depicted in a suffocating way. It actually gives off the same vibe as this feeling you get at 3am, when the world seemingly stops for a moment and you can take a breath. The small lights are far apart little islands in this sea of darkness, but it doesn't feel threatening. It conveys the stillness of life, these little pockets of human experience seemingly fallen out of time. It feels real even though these pictures don't actually show a real cityscape at night. They're a collage, thousands of pictures combined into what amounts to a carefully fabricated image. We even came to romanticize this feeling of 3am solitude. It's the time of sad lo-fi anime edits and having the third existential crisis in a row. It's late nights out on the balcony watching the city lights spread out below or lonely walks at night. In media, it's a chance for the lone wolf to show a moment of vulnerability or weakness to emphasize their humanity. And all of these scenarios are permeated by the same feeling, a representation of the night. Now, I actually don't mind being alone. And I know I'm not alone in this. The desire for solitude might seem counterintuitive. After all, the main driver for our escapist tendencies is our longing for connection. But it actually goes both ways and it manifests in a variety of little things. 
For some people, the main appeal of liminal spaces isn't merely this fascination with emptiness and eeriness, it's the sense of being truly alone. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you were the last person on Earth? Whatever your answer may be, you can't deny it's intriguing to entertain this thought. While for some this scenario may be a terrifying proposition, for others it's literally the dream. It's an escapist fantasy, in the same vein as getting stuck in the back rooms, exploring liminal spaces or this solitary feeling you get at night. The night in itself being a way to escape the struggles of the day. A quick side note, the majority of this actually came from 2am thoughts on my notes app, born from this late night solitude. A time when we get this random burst of creativity, when we finally feel in sync with the world. Recently I had a major artistic slump, but then of all times it all just fell into place seamlessly. As if somehow my thoughts get sharpened and I could think clearer than I ever could during the daytime. I was almost consumed by this rush of creating something. The atmosphere had an almost zen-like quality that put me into this flow state of just being able to write without thinking about it. Something I struggled to do for months up to that point. So why is it we get this sudden rush of motivation at night? Now, there are a lot of aspects to exactly why that happens, and it has a lot to do with both psychology and neurochemistry, both of which I'm by no means an expert on. If you want to hear it explained in greater detail, I really recommend you watch Dr. K's video on it, I linked it in the description. To oversimplify it, what distracts us most of the time is our tendency to seek out activities that give us a rush of dopamine. Checking your phone is just one example of that. Throughout the day, carrying out activities creates a buildup of what's called adenosine. It kind of acts like a counter to dopamine, it makes us tired. Now, when it's late at night, you're less likely to follow your consumeristic tendencies and it feels like you can finally indulge in all your wildest ideas, dream projects or things you want to do tomorrow. You can fantasize about anything without having to follow through with it. There's no cost to imagining doing something as opposed to actually doing it. And at night it comes almost naturally. After all, there is nothing to do but to think. There is nowhere you have to be, nothing you have to accomplish. In other words, there are no expectations of you at night, you can be anyone. This lifts the pressure invisibly hanging over us throughout the day. All in all, that was a very long-winded attempt to describe a feeling. I don't know what the lesson here is, maybe it was all just the ravings of one sleep deprived person, a circle jerk to creativity, but at least it was a good story. And maybe sometimes that's all there is to life, a small moment of realization, not a constant buzz, but a hey, you exist, take a breath. And then the night goes on, and for me, that's enough, take care.